that's part of our mission. Bison is an intricate part to make all the pieces come together. Hey guys, Dusty Baker at Cross Thurman's Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Very exciting day today. They're already making their way over here. This is the Haas herd. We're out here at our nine acre pasture. It is our halfway acres and uh, very excited to do something today. This is mine and Marissa's mission and goal of uh, bringing the bison back. And today is a perfect example of that. A lot of preparation, a lot of work has gone into this and it involves lots of good people that are back here behind me. And some familiar faces are here with us today as well that are all part of this that we brought back to be a part of this special moment for us here at the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. And uh, without further ado, let's let some bison out. wider than the creek, it's just below the yeah. ground, right? The creek is actually wider than it looks right there. Uh, so the water is here, here, and you had enough flow that you could pump it up there. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you would need to drill the well first, find yeah. out how much it has as far as capacity, how many gallons per minute. Things walk are funny, but there's definitely some ants in there. What, what is all this, like, red? Are those eggs? What is that? This is the hay meadow behind us here. Last year we cut hay off this, but what we're doing is actually tying up uh, some gates real quick. We've got Ethan and Cole Fagan out here and our good buddy Cole Meager from Meager Media out here with us and Marissa behind the camera. And what we're doing is we're just gonna tie these up real quick. I don't have holes drilled in the pipe and we're gonna do a pasture party release for the Hossard. This is basically just a temporary gate, is all it is. This is because once these animals, you let them out in the new pasture, they just want to run. And uh, I don't want them in my hay meadow because we still have a lot of fence work to do. So let's go down here and hang up one more gate. Those guys are looking at plants. <laughs> And in the meantime, we'll see what the double coals are doing and uh, Ethan. Hustling? Yeah, we're hustling. The rain's coming, which is awesome, but we've, uh, we want to be able to plow the drones so we can catch them doing their thing. Dash. Robbing a panel real quick. Okay. Fill one more gap I didn't see, and I don't think this is going to be used here anyways for bison. Oh. Oh, did you get? Ooh. Just let it fall. We're going to pick these guys up and head over there and let them out. Out here. We've got bugs everywhere. Really? We need some sweet nuts. Oh, yeah. Then we could just do some ID. We do need to take some notes. I mean, I mean, if we had a list of all the plants we've identified so far, it'd be this long already. Really? Yeah. There's just insects everywhere. I mean, look. Yeah. Some around. of them are tiny bees and some of them are beetles. And there's a yarrow plant over here with like two or three different kinds of beetles on it. Different kind of beetles on this one though. There's, you know, prairie parsley. You need to go find some dung beetles. I know. Here's this is yarrow right here. 
Yarrow. So, yeah, and it's it's usually a white flower, mm -hmm. but there's one over there that's bright pink. I mean, like bright pink. And we're gonna go back to where the hoss heart is. Don't let them out. Run to their thing. They'll have 80 acres of grazing all for them. We got 27 animals on 80 acres, and uh, it's abundant right now. We're very blessed with the rain we've had and the great conditions that have brought on lots of growth. So, no better time to let some bison out. I love that sound right there. Shut Look at her down. picking up that top stuff. She don't even care. She's not even being that picky. Yeah. And she's got it's blackberry stick on her. Cause it's all super just perfect, you know? She yep. don't need to be picky. So they're excited. They just look just funny. Grab a couple bites. Yeah. Grab a couple bites. Look at all the bugs wow. between us and the trees. That is cool. There's your heifer right here in front of us. This one that we raised. Oh, okay. That was yeah. one of the ones you were talking about earlier. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, and when she turns to the side, then this one right behind her too? Yeah. That one's really piggy. Thanks. <laughs> You know, just gotta be faster than you, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, Hoss, I, I don't really jack around. Yeah, he's, with Hoss. he's in the back. I, I he's busy right now. He's following his ladies. I know, but I don't really like 
Well, the bison finally made their way over to us. We've been chasing them around trying to get some good footage of them, but we're up here on uh, kind of this place that it's one of those places you pull up and you're like, I envisioned bison here at one time and um, they're here. Great day, an exciting day um, for Marissa and I, and that's when we brought Cole and Ethan along, and of course our good friend Cole Meager that's out there in the pasture. <laughs> Cole came up here from Texas to hang out with us and be a part of this moment and get some good footage of him. So he's been flying the drone and stuff and, and hang out with us. Got the, we've been hanging out um, this afternoon, uh, even before we left the bison out, and uh, since we let him out, we've been roaming around looking at plants and learning about, uh, you know, herbivory and, and soul science and stuff like that, you know, nerding out a little bit, flowers, butterflies, all the insects that are going on where we can't see bees hanging around me. And it's, uh, it's been beautiful out here. Had a little storm come through, but, um, so fun to do this and have these animals out here. And so, like I said, it's part of our mission. Our main mission is to put these animals where they used to be, where they used to thrive, used to roam. Um, and we're working on that. And today was that accomplishment. Um, the work doesn't stop. We still got lots of fencing to do so we can move them even further, you know, into in pastures that uh, we haven't been able to move bison to. And so 
they'll be here for oh maybe a month or so a little bit longer but these spring plants and how beautiful it is and all the wild indigo that you see the yellow and i don't even know all the species you know when i was in college at oklahoma state i did have to take a plant class and it was kind of hard you know back in the day when i was uh you know 19 or 20 and uh may not have paid attention enough back in the day and couldn't remember and i was just trying to get my degree and and get out of college right move on um and now i'm wishing i paid a little bit more attention because here we are this is all we've been doing the past couple hours is identifying plants and learning a lot from cole fagan and ethan here um so got a lot to learn but i love learning about these plants because these guys all the, a lot of this the spring green uh, that we have right now won't be here for long because uh once the heat comes in and the uh and the moisture doesn't fall anymore it'll change over and we should be getting a lot of our native grasses that come through and so we're learning all about that with these guys and it's just there's more to the whole picture than just raising bison we don't raise bison just for meat. We don't raise bison just for breeding. As there's a whole holistic approach to this thing and how much they can affect other, other things such as the land. And they've done that for hundreds of years. And uh, we're still taking that approach and letting them manage the land with some human intervention. Um, and once the bison are out here with some help from us, they can keep this landscape the way it should be and the way it was um, a long time ago and so that's what we're trying to do that's part of our mission is they're going to affect what grasses are here what weeds are here they're going to affect what birds thrive here and insects thrive here bison alone affect that holistic image of our property and that's what they do everywhere that's the great thing about this animal and so that's what we're trying to strive for here and uh, that's why we've been spending time with ethan and cole fagan and that's why we did this burn uh, because of all the great things that it provides to this land and so that's part of our mission uh, and the bison is an intricate part to make all the pieces come together and continue the cycle of um, of restoring the land and protecting the land for when Brooks is older, we want this land to be an amazing place. And uh, the bison can do that with some help from from us. I want to thank Cole Fagan. I want to thank Ethan McJames um, from the NRCS and Oaks and Prairies. I want to thank those guys. Cole Meager, my buddy. He's always here for the big stuff. Him filming. And, of course, my wife also filming and being a part of this. Uh, this is so exciting for us to see this and I know she's into it and we're both learning at the same time which is what I which is what I love it's not just about bison there's a bigger picture here thank you guys for watching us see you guys soon we're gonna keep on bison ranching